Okay, so uh, we're going to be doing this exercise. A very simple exercise is about, I mean, these two exercises. I'm going to start with the first one. This is just to introduce to you how to declare a variable, how to you to put something inside that variable and to get extract something from that variable. That's the only objective of this. It's a very simple application. And also how to manage to display something gradually to be able to display something different. You see these things? Uh, this is something that we would like to just display. Uh, we're going to build them incrementally. And this is one of the main things you're going to be learning in this, in this course. How to, if you have a big problem, how to cut the problem into small pieces and then solve each piece and keep solving the pieces until you finish solving the whole problem. And this is something that is going to help you in anything in your life, not only in programming. Because if you have any big problem, this is the way how to do it. You just divide it into small pieces that you can handle. You would manage and you handle those small pieces. You solve them and then you keep going until you solve the whole problem. So let's get started, inshallah. The first thing I'm going to create a new project all the time. If you have a new exercise, what you're going to be doing, the first thing you do in NetBeans, you create a new project all the time. Don't add a new file. If you create this, it's not going to work as you expect it. So the easiest part for now, just always create a new project by clicking on this button over here. We just make sure that this is Java application. Don't touch, don't change anything and click next. Don't forget to, to give it a name. So I'm going to give it, uh, let's say, week one, exercise one. And then I chose to put it in this location. So I know that this is where it should be. And then I finish. Now, once you're here, don't touch anything else for now. You just press the Enter key after reaching the end of this line. And then you can just put this here. OK, just a small word about these things. We've seen them enough. These are called comments. These are called comments. That means these are some kind of code. No, this is not something that is meant for the computer to execute. So these are meant for just us to be able to read them and do something. So I can put some kind of comments to explain what the code is doing. So this is helpful for somebody who is reading your code so he can understand what your code is all about and what it is doing. And that's why there are two types. Actually, this, this is how you can see there are two types of those gray things. These are the ones that start with this and ends with this. These are called block comments. It's like a big comment. I can put a lot of things. Whatever I type here, even if I, I declare something like here, this is not something that is going to be taken into consideration by the computer. This is something that is going to stay there just for us to read, not for the computer to take into consideration. The computer is never going to execute a comment. And a comment, like in this case, starts from here and ends with here. That means if I finish, if I remove one of them, that means now the comment starts here and ends here. So that's why everything was included. So just be careful. When you open a comment, you need to close it. So that's why now this is this is called a block comment. This is something like a block comment, but it's a kind of a special comment for like a documentation. We'll talk about it later, but that's the main thing. It's a comment means the computer is not going to execute it. This is the same thing. This is different. This is another comment, but it's different. It's called a lined comment, which means at the end of the line, I can type my code. So the lined comment means it's a comment that's only starts from this slash slash. And until the end of the line, whatever you type there is a going to be a comment, which means the computer is not going to be looking at it. As soon as you go to the next line, now this is something that the computer is, is going to take into consideration. So the comments means it's for us, something for us to understand. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make use of those comments. So I'm going to say, for example, declare three variables. So this is going to explain what I'm going to do. And I'm going to declare because this exercise asks us to declare three variables that are real number variables, n1, n2, and n3. Now pay attention, something that is, I did not focus on it last, la, yesterday when we were talking about looking at your solution. But when I'm asking you to give a specific name for a variable, you have to use the same name. Now if I tell you the variable should be called n1, n2, n3, well don't call it x1, x2, x3. Or don't even call it n1 with lowercase n. 
I'm asking you N1 capital N, you should respect that. And this is going to be taken into consideration, for example, in a quiz or in an assignment. If I tell you exactly what to do, you should follow that. Because if you don't follow it, this is not going to be uh, answering my question. Okay, so uh, now I was saying that it is important that you need to respect those names. Why am I saying that? Just uh, this is not just me that I would like to, or uh, you know, I would like to be the boss and do what I say. And if because if you're going to be working as a programmer, you're going to be working in a team, and the team leader is going to tell you, well, this is your task. I would like you to create this and to do that. If he gives you some kind of specification, that means, for example, this variable has a specific name and you don't respect it, maybe this is going to affect some others who are also working on another part of the program and they're going to be expecting you to name your variable that name. So that's why it's very important as a team member to follow the instructions. So that's why um, this is something important. So I need to declare now three variables that are real numbers I did not specify what kind of data, of data type for a real number. It can be float or double. Now, we've seen we've declared it with double before. I'm going to show you what if I would like to use float. Because float has this very special data type. With double, we can to do this. It's quite easy. We, we, you, most of you did it, I think, right? Not, not, not none of you had a problem with finishing that exercise yesterday with the double. Now, if we do it with float, something special is going to happen. That's what I'd like to, to use this opportunity for, for, for explaining it. Now, if I use float, remember the difference between a float and a double? Float is a small data type for real numbers. Double is a bigger data type for real numbers. Now, I'm going to name my variables n1, n2, n3. Now, this is just declaring three variables. I'm going to initialize the variables. So this is me using the comments so you can see how they can be used and how they can be helpful to explain your code to somebody who's going to read it. Now, if I'd like to have some kind of output like this, you can see that n1 is having 5, n2 is 3, and then n3 is going to be the result of this operation. So uh, let's do that. So n1 is 5. That's OK. I'm putting now an int into a float. Is it OK? Yes. F int is a small data type. Float is a bigger data type than, than int. So it's going to be converted. Well, can I just say, for, oh, I, let me just put 5.0 to put it there. It doesn't work and see the error message. Incompatible types. Possible lossy conversion from double to float. Can I put a double inside of a float? No, double is bigger than float, so I cannot put something from a bigger data type to a smaller data type. So it tells me it's a problem. But this is a real number. And by default, all real numbers are double. So what if I'd like to put a, a double into a float? Well, this is not going to help. I can just Leave it like this, for example, or let me show you the second way in with N2. I can use 3.0, but then I have to do something very really special, and this is only working for float. I'll put an F. If I don't put an F next to a double value, it's going to be double. If I put an F after a double number, so this is a number, but I'm just saying to the computer, this is a float, not a double. So I can put it inside of a variable of type float. Is that OK? So just this f is a weird thing, but this is for the necessity to be able to separate the double from the float. So 3.0 f, that's a float. 3.0, that's a double. See how stupid they are, these computers? So we have to even separate 3.0 from being a double to being uh, a float. So for, com for the computer, these are completely different things. These are just a set of zeros and ones. And we make sense of those zeros and ones the way we want them to be. So it's uh, up to us to 
make sure that these computers become intelligent. Okay, they can they just they are programmed to behave so we can see them uh, behaving in in a way that makes us feel like they are intelligent, but they are not. So now N3 is the result of, I said, N1 plus N2 divided by N3, so this thing here. And now I'm going to be displaying the results. Now for displaying the results, uh, just system dot out dot print line. And then I'm going to display N1 equals and then plus N1 and then copy and paste into N3 and let's run now and see if it's going to give the same data it looks like the same data so you see if I look at the output it's not different from using a double or using a float as you can see they give me the same output 5.0 regardless if it's double or float if I use double it's going to be 5.0 I don't see the F here that's my point. So, but still, this is a float. Now, I'd like to be able to do something like this. That looks like this. Now, if you're paying attention, this is just a lot of stars, the multiplication, that are laid out in a way that looks fancy. So, let's try to do that. So, the way we're going to be doing it is step by step. The easiest part is to be able just to do this. The, the, the ones in the top and the ones in the bottom. <coughs> Let's just do that and see if we can just... I'm going just to copy and paste and then remove here and put some kind of stars. First I'll just... I'm not counting, I'm just going to put some until I think it's okay and then put the others from here. And let's run it again. Okay, that seems nice. Now, maybe if I'd like to have something like this, it should have some stars before each one of these N1, N2, N3. And you see the N1, N2, N3, they have different set of stars. So let's just put those. So if I put a star before, now this is going to be just like this. But what if I'd like to have them a little bit pushed? So these stars are not aligned, but just one next to the other. So let me just push this one, for example, like this, and push this one like this. And maybe push the others so they can also be pushed here. I'll just put spaces so they seem like they're pushed, but th these are just spaces before. And you see this, just to make it look like the same corner, I'm going to push each one of them with a space here. And now let's run. So this corner seems like this corner over here. But the N1, N2, N3 are not aligned the same way here. So I would like them to be aligned. Again, spaces are going to align them. And let's run. As you can see, every time I just put some small correction and then I run again, just to see if it looks like what I would like, to, what li would like it to look like. Now, it looks like uh, this corner, this part is looking good. I need to finish the other part. So the other part, First of all, is this okay or uh, it seems to be okay. Now I need to put some kind of stars here. So if I'd like to put some stars here, so that means after that, after this N1, I would put a plus, a space and then a star. And let me push also copy and paste and see if this is going to get me closer. Well, this one is looks good. As you can see here, this one looks good. The only thing that the others should be pushed to the right a little bit. So I need to put more spaces between the three and the, the second star. And this is what I'm doing. Now the last thing is to finish this thing here and to put some stars in the bottom line and then see if this is enough. Oh, it looks it's enough, mashallah. I just fixed it enough. Now this is okay. Is this enough? Well, not really because you see, I'm just putting some spaces here. If you see the build successful and the build successful here, they're, ha they're not at the same position. So I just need maybe to put some kind of spaces like this and then maybe copy the same spaces so they can be all pushed like this. Now if I run this thing, it's almost what I would like to be. It's fair enough, close enough. Maybe it's exactly the same. That's amazing. It looks like exactly the same, mashallah, just within the same number of spaces. So that's how we, how we do it, incrementally. But let me show you something more interesting. 
these spaces here that I just added, there's the easiest way to put some spaces and push something like the tab. You see, if I push the tab, I can push the tab here. It's better than the space. So the tab here is going to just to give me always just two space, two tabs is equivalent to maybe eight spaces, something like that. So if I just do this, this is going to give me something similar. Now, there's a better way to do the tabs. You can just put this backslash T. So you can see those tabs, how many, them, how many of them you have put. So for example, if I put like this thing, now backslash T, just one of them means one tab. So if I put just backslash T, notice this is not a slash, a backslash. Backslash T means this is like a code for a tab. Push like four spaces, something like that. So you see, this is just one backslash. It gives me this space here. If I want to have more, another backslash T. So just put another backslash T. You now I'm putting two of them. And if I run them, so it's just going to be pushed to the right. And this is another way to play with the output. So this is the first time we see this backslash T. Are there on other codes? Yes, there are. Backslash T is just to push. Backslash N to go back to the line. Uh, for example, if I do something like here, in the middle I put backslash N, just to show it to you, it doesn't uh, help me achieve what I would like, but just to show it to you what this does. If you run here, see this is going to be here, and then the backslash N means go back to the line. And uh, there are other codes, uh, you can see that's on the slides, but the main idea, this is the, just some kind of introduction to those kind of, these are called escape codes. But my main point is, how to declare a variable, put something inside of it, and work with the output, and also build incrementally your solution. Any question? Yes. Yes. This code? The code, I'm going to put them on the website, yes. I did not put it yesterday, but I will, inshallah, today. So one last thing, you see, uh, I don't click on this button much often, as you have noticed. See, this is means every time I make a change, it means just mm, did not save it yet. So, for example, just put a space here, and you see that as soon as space, this becomes bold. If I save, this non, this is again plain without being bold. So bold means you did something that you did not save. But what happens, for example, if I put a space and then remove it, and then click on run? Notice what is going to happen to this when I run. So the first thing that happens is that it NetBeans saves your file, and then it runs it. So every time you just put something, you run it, it's going to be saved. So don't worry about saving your file. It's already saving where in the location that you mentioned. You don't need to pay attention to the saving thing. If for whatever reason, for example, you make a change and then you did not save, and you close NetBeans, it's going to ask you, oh, do you want to save this or not? Then you just click on save, and that's it. So. That's uh, a small also introduction about the net means. Any questions?